Thank you. I put this on 10 minutes because then I have two minutes, two minutes to say something important. <laughs> Can I take that one? Yes. My name is Anders Lundsgård. I am senior engineer at Scania Connected Services. And I'm here to talk about our uh, two-year-old uh, microservice movement. Uh, we started about two years ago and we are far from ready. But I will sh talk a little bit about the why we started how we made, kind of, we, I will touch on that, but also some metrics on the value of microservice movement. Is dark, I had some colors on my... <laughs> I, I think I have the slides on my head, so try, please try to get them. Um, it's going to connect the services. It's all about the connected vehicle. We have about 200,000 connected vehicles sending in information every minute or every tenth minute. That means about four or five hundred messages per second into our uh, system. About eight engineers is checking in code into this code base. And the reason for microservices is actually coming from the business. There's a big value in the data that sends in from the vehicles. And we need to expose this, this information in various services for the end customers, but also for Scania internal use. So to make more services, we have to m work much faster. Our software evolution has been more like, I guess, every company. We start with spaghetti code in the 90s. We build up a lot of monoliths you know, for connected services. That means one big monolith uh, in the last decade. And now we are in the microservice era. And the reality today is actually a meal like <laughs> more or less like this. To be honest, uh, I remember in the past we talked a lot about the, about continuous integration, and I will start by saying that continuous integration is the foundation of everything we do within the software delivery at Scania Connected Services, and I guess also at Scania as a whole. Everything should be versioned. Uh, we have autom automated build and test and so on. Claim over blame. In other words, if we have something that's that's a, it's a problem, that means a red lamp in the ceiling, we have to fix that first be before we continue doing these uh, tasks that we have planned in a sprint uh, meeting or something. Trunk-based development, that's the key part of continuous integration, to me at least. I'll touch on that later. Uh, this is my desktop. Actually, it's the very last manual deployment of the monolith. It's not that very clear, but it's a lot of red bulls in the right corner. If you do manual deployments, you need to be very shaped. That's a thing of the past. Everything we do around continuous integration is, I would say, it's, or the, our agile moment is more or less about limit work in progress. And for a developer, that means reducing the state of code that is in version control, but not in production. So we can have features that is planned, probably not so much features that are planned. We have code in production, and we have deleted code that didn't bring any value. So the, f the dangerous part of state of code is pending code. And when we're talking about lean, that's our inventory. And we want to reduce that. This is uh, an architectural view of uh, an overview of a uh, big monolith application with a lot of services, one big database on a big monolithic infrastructure. And the major reason I would say to split this up, I shall st uh, as I will touch on later, is that when we became about 50 engineers, we still didn't manage, although we did continuous integration, we didn't manage to go over to more iterative delivery. We stopped for about two years in delivering value to the production environment in only an iteration of four weeks, three to four weeks. So if we turn this page a little bit, uh, we can see that the monolith is split into several parts. And the most important part here is that these services are now independent deployable. So one team can deploy the green one five times a day. The black one is um, an old service, not so, much, not so many change requests on, 
Perhaps it's deployed once every third month. And why, again, microservices? One, autonomous teams. Teams should own, should own one or more microservices. And the build, test, and deploy speed increases much more faster when we have less code to build, less code to test, and less code to deploy to a web server or, or something. Of course, the zero, sub zero is uh, that we should work faster. That's the main reason for, for this movement. I used to show this picture to new engineers at uh, Connected Services. And its uh, most important part is actually that this guy is alone at the version control system. CI, CI, good CI metric is check in code, pull code more than once a day, hopefully every second hour or something. And there's no person from the version control to the pipeline out, out to development, staging, and prod environment. And that means those teams who are very agile have the ability to go from check-in to production within 15 minutes. They can choose if they want to have a, de a deploy button or if they want to automate the deploy button to production. And some teams do that. I think the record is about seven minutes from check-in to a production deploy. Version everything. One part that we have a lot of work with still is versioning our infrastructure. So doing this continuous de uh, deployment actually is a very static um, infrastructure today. One very important part is that we need to decouple deploy from release. Deploy means taking some binaries or taking some SQL scripts and apply it to the end uh, environment, dev, staging, or prod. Release means we enable the feature for the end user. Feature teams have the full responsibility to do the deployment without interfering with the market, the business. An engineer can actually deploy a feature by its own. But when you know that if I check in this code and we have the automated pipeline out of the production, probably I take this engineer and have a code review before I check in the code. Because in 50 minutes, all our 10,000 end users will have the site down. Release is a business decision. Of course, feature teams are also very interested in the feedback from the business or from the end users. But by maybe higher decisions within the company or in the marketing will take decisions to do release based on various kinds of activities. Doing a release, this is uh, one of our most technical uh, product owners, Martin. He's doing a release for a new uh, front-end portal. He's doing that, we zoom in the screen, for some countries that we start to toggle on this new functionality. And it more, it's not more or less uh, effort than clicking a button. It's so easy to deploy that actually Tilda, four years, made a release to the UK market this uh, Saturday. <laughs> she didn't think it was so cool to do it, but I, I was thrilled. Zero <laughs> <coughs> uh, downtime, extremely important, and that means doing a deployment to production without the end customer realizing anything, any downtime at all. And that means we can do deployments in office hours. And the developers that are checking code will be on the place and will be available in the time when the code goes live. That's wonderful. Visibility. I came through some, some uh, screenshots and various types of visibility that we bring in our office space. First of all, 200,000 vehicles and our 10,000 unique end users. That, uh, those are the entities that we want to serve. Monitoring of our performance our servers. They are sadly not always green, at least not the last week. 
Um, where are our users active in the world? This was by the time Martin enabled the, I think it was Argentina. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> Argentina, uh, Germany and Sweden. Those markets were for first to, to meet this new portal. They weren't that really happy in the beginning. They're still not very happy, but we, we send, we give, uh, we, we get, finally get feedback from the end user from the portal itself. We asked them a question, why do we go back to the old portal? Because we have those two in parallel. To know why. These are metrics, CI metrics for how many um, check-ins we had when we worked with the monolith in 2014. And compared to microservice movement in 2015. So we have about four times more check-ins compared to the previous year. And these are deployments per week during this year. I can talk about more about this in the office space later. I have a small star there. But there are about, if we take this year, we have an average of about 20 to 30 de production deployments per week. This image is a symbol for autonomous teams. We are about 28 teams that connect the services, but these are, could be two of them. They work very close together in terms of the team. These are closed in office space, but they do not rely on each other in any binary way. Their services are talking over HTTP. And I guess the developers know about these uh, HTTP status codes. Those are key in a microservice architecture. And of course, all this visualization is very important. Now I have to say something important. Um, yeah, what happens when one guy falls off? He made it. Uh, it's in, he was fine after a week or two. But when one, one team has a problem, it doesn't affect the one on the right. They can continue doing their work. And we actually had, have, a, have had a, a situation the last couple of weeks when one team had a serious problems. Of course, other teams can help them if they have the knowledge of how to solve some kind of performance issue or something. We can help each other. But in the old monolith, probably we would delay the release. We had a new planning with a lot of people, and then we have a new release date, and then everyone thinks that, yeah, we'll make it that time. But in this, in this stage of our development, the other 27 teams just continue doing their thing. And that's a really good part of the microservice movement. We have a lot of challenges, separating of duties. We have a kind of good DevOps moment, I think. How to the, I want to define the DevOps in this talk, uh, but we have separated the silos from uh, development, support, market, and also ops. Breaking down the monolith is not easy. We are far from ready. We have practiced a lot of anti-patterns during, during the road, and probably will do that forward, too. Testing microservices is a big thing. It's harder to test a microservice architecture than it is to test a big monolith. And Luckily, we finally have, as the uh, speaker said earlier, we have a decision of cloud first at Scania. Yeah. So we have suffered from cloud abilities, but f I see very positive to the future uh, in that area too. And I'm really glad to be an employee at Scania. Yeah. Of course, it's quite cool to be one of this, those unicorns, but I look forward to the journey from that horse to that unicorn. And I think we can do it. We have an executive board that has talked about Agile for, for years now. They're not talking about DevOps yet, but I hope. They're talking about the cloud and all the cool stuff. And last but not least, open source is a big thing for us in the future. Uh, these uh, slides are already on slideshare. 
And if you want some uh, DevOps tweets, I'm on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>